morning guys, uh, me and Jeff here, we're heading up to uh, Quartz Occurrence uh, north of Barry. Uh, we've been there before but he's found some other location that we're going to check out. Uh, so we've just turned off the 400 on Vassy Road and uh, here's the intersection. There's my good friend Jeff. Okay, we took a wrong turn. We should have just gone straight from that intersection, taking us towards Coldwater. Okay, you hang a left onto River Street. Jeff has just pointed out, never say no to free. Changed my mind, there's some nasty sludge in those things. Okay, you can see the bedrock starting to come up. Looks like a bit of nice to me. If you see anything, let me know. Yeah, Severn Falls, 20K. Whoa, is this it? No. Oh, okay. I'll keep an eye out there. Magnet fishing. Sounds like it could be fun. And what's what's it involve? You just Princess Auto, maybe they sell like the 50 pound magnet for like 20 bucks or whatever. Uh, what, do, what do you get when drop you make, like you drop, what kind of fish? You get a rope and you drop it into the water beside docks and you get whatever is metallic down there. Oh wow. Old shopping carts, fishing lures. Okay, uh, rock rock hounding's out guys. Knives. We're going we're going for magnet fishing now. This will be my magnet fishing channel. Okay, just after these train tracks I believe. According to Jeff. Yeah, it should be up on the left here. The left. Uh, I guess he um, he's telling me he found this he found the spot by uh, Google Earth, just kind of checking it out and dropping that little man down and using it to look on the sides of the road. Did that, is that it? Yeah, it's the, the next one after this, I think. Okay. So I'm kind of... Okay, is this it? Here is what all this... Oh, there's... that looks interesting. That was the main spot. Oh, yeah. That's very interesting. Oh, nice. Up here had some. You got your calcite there. You've got your quartz or cinnopyrite maybe. Uh, you've got mica. You've got more quartz. Ah, there's a feldspar crystal in the actual quartz. It's been a bit chipped away, but you can definitely see the, the natural crystal faces on it. Uh, uh, where is it? Right there. There's another feldspar crystal. Ah. So looking from above, it becomes a little more obvious that this must have been some kind of a vertical, like a dike up which the molten material squeezed itself towards the surface. So we're unlikely to find anything at the back in terms of an exposure. It's all along this way. You can actually see the width of it here. And finally, right over there, it pinches out. So at its thickest point is where you're most likely to find the bigger crystals and that's a little bit that way and obviously it cut out into the road so whatever was at one time in the middle of where the road now sits would have been where your best crystals were. I would hope they've dumped it over there in the nearest hollow. Got some really cool blobs here of I don't know what, maybe pyrite, hard to be sure. See if we can chip it out. There's obviously a lot of interesting stuff concentrated in this little vein that's running up here. You always see the uh, the staining from the pyrite when there is pyrite. Always good to see what you can extract from the pockets. Um, usually along the walls you can shave stuff off quite easily uh, just by chipping, you know, half an inch along, you know, to inwards. Uh, and you'll usually find something, so there's quite a few little pockets in this area. Here's a real cool little find. You got a lump of, um, got a quartz crystal embedded in this calcite with some manganese, I believe it's manganese imprints. They look almost like a little bit like fern leaves um, along the, uh, the cleavage of the calcite. Kind of nice. So this lovely sort of reddish copper stuff, um, as soon as you chip it, which accidentally I did, it comes up with the brassy, goldish, pyrite kind of looking stuff. So that was just an oxidized surface. 
super rich uh, road cutting in terms of its different minerals. I mean, we've got a pegmatite back there, um, which obviously cut through the middle of the road like that. It wasn't a very wide pegmatite, but uh, it's just north of Barry. Um, so, I mean, it's not too far a drive from Toronto, but we're going to head on. We're going to check out our, one of our favorite quartz locations, which has traditionally been yielding some really nice, beautiful, perfect looking crystals. Kind of tapped out right now, but still, we're going to have a look there and a few other little spots around here. Definitely stopping at many road cuttings. Anything we see road cutting wise, uh, we'll be stopping at. So, we're uh, going along the upper Big Chute Road pretty well. Every one of the road cuttings here has been freshly blasted, so it's kind of stuff that's not been picked over by rock hounds over the last 30 years or so. Um, basically the kind of things we're looking for, preferably a pegmatite in the rock, like a wide vein or even a narrow vein with large, large crystal formations like felspar, quartz, whatever, or a scarn. Um, yeah, in other words, usually got a lot of calcite with um, base minerals that have been bought up from deeper down or we might be looking for just a vein probably a lighter colored rock as a rule or a peachy colored rock uh, in this sort of linear sort of way either laid down as a dike or a sill like sill being flat out. oh by the way check this out just kind of a neat little eh, hard to see anyway so that's kind of what we're looking at as we're booting along here and we've seen a few examples of that but we're really not stopping too long because we're on our way to our to our quartz location. So okay our next spot the quartz location we're on side road 34 running parallel to the 400 um, we're actually on side road 34 now we're coming from our road cutting locations there we go there's the 400 to the left um, great spot so the road takes a sharp left, goes underneath, we got to check this stuff here, see if we've got any quartz in there. Goes underneath the 400, and we're going to hang a left again real shortly. Okay, Lake Road, hang a left on the Lake Road, that's Jeff's speed turns. You saw how, you seen how this guy rally drives obviously up at uh, Craigmont there, so you understand what we go through when he's excited about the minerals. So just in front here, I'm just digging here and I'm already finding a, a lot of these beautiful little small well-formed crystals. Oh, beautiful, look at this, eh? Just laying here in the dirt, whether it's been dropped by people extracting from the uh, initial pit or the initial um, pocket. I'm really not sure, but I mean, digging in the dirt in this area, I mean, there's got to be a ton of good stuff in them. So typically the quartz has been bought up into these pockets and fissures by um, extremely hot water. Um, and it's dissolved in the hot water and it precipitates out into these pockets. And uh, so, I mean, the pocket is typically where you're going to find the quartz. Uh, and if you're very lucky, you'll find a doubly terminated quartz. In other words, a termination on either end of what we call the prism. So I found kind of a nice rock here with um, a bunch of smaller crystals and I found one somewhat larger um, again just digging in the dirt I'm gonna clean that up see how it looks at the end just found a real nice crystal sort of shape you can it's kind of dull on the outside but you can see by that sort of shattered part that it's clear as can be on the inside beautiful again Jeff has the eye look at that beautiful smoky quartz or excuse me regular quartz with dark coating what you find buddy well it's not perfect but what do you mean look at it you're getting it's better beautiful so these uh, crystals they're left-handed and right-handed crystals so there's a little facet way up at the top I'm trying to just put it in front of you there that'll tell you the left-handedness or right-handedness of the crystal depending on which side of the crystal it appears on Here's where all these lovely dark stained crystals are coming from. I think it's hematite or something, just a skin on the surface of the of the crystals. So as he gets deeper in his little hole along the front of this rock face, starting to find some larger crystals. Some nice faces on that one. It's a bit of a pillar. That's 
just a conglomerate. There's a few in there. Though, but yeah. So there's a pocket here. I'm starting to find lots of really nice little crystals in the bottom of the mud. And right here, pocket right next to it. I don't think it's been tapped. And again, I'm finding a lot of loose crystals and well exposed crystals. So just a bit more washing of my, my two little pockets here. And uh, I'm finding a ton of really sharp lustrous faces along here and just some larger exposed um, crystals along here so I'm going to do some chipping and it's not perfect but uh, it's not a bad little find a real nice sort of end Is it your channel? It's my channel all right. Do you have a video on your camera? Uh, yep it's taking a video right now and I'm just okay this is what's come out of the a little pool and I can feel more with my hands. I can feel a much bigger crystal. It's very transparent. Well, I should say translucent. Tra ah, transparent will go. And I've got an audience here, but I can't show them because they're young guys. But they're from Dundas, Ontario, and they know a lot about minerals. Just oh yeah, some real nice area. stuff. So there's your quartz with the hematite coating again. I just rinsed it in my puddle here. Keep. Pull a really nice transparent one out, but I've just been telling my friend Cameron here. Um, sometimes you can find ghost crystals. So in other words, you'll see a crystal within a crystal. And the reason for that is, is as it's forming, some sort of uh, layer will form over the, the, the crystal face that's current at the time. And then it'll redeposit and put more um, uh, silica over, over top of that. And uh, that's, that gives the appearance of a ghost crystal, a crystal inside a crystal. But I mean, it's all just, in the nature of how the crystal forms um, and the crystal of course growing outwards in thickness sometimes they're flat and squashed uh, because there's been limited room I found a lot of flat crystals here uh, and of course the temperature and pressure have a lot to do with uh, exactly how the quartz forms and the different varieties that form see I'm on the other side of the road here in this sort of sandstone layer very friable and this little pocket you can see all the crystals this is probably your easiest pickings for some nice little crystals I must admit I'm going to give this a little bit of a work as well and see what I can I just found that one there there's two in fact just laying loose inside the pocket where did your buddy go he's just down there just down the road a bit so I'm chipping away the sandstone at the top and the bottom I'm going to pull out the quartz layer and see what's on the other side this is actually back here the best place to find crystals of all um, lovely you know, without damage on the crystals, beautiful faces. They seem to be really triangular as far as the quartz goes, more so than on the other side. Uh, if you're wondering about my hands, I had a nasty allergic reaction two weeks ago and all the skin's coming off. So it's, it's looking like quite a scene. Uh, yeah, check that out, eh? It's kind of nasty. But anyway, it's itching and that's about all now. It's no longer hurting. But back there, in the pockets, keep on going and you keep finding all these lovely loose crystals and they're beautiful, right? So I mean the reason that these crystals are forming back here um, in the hollow space behind the, uh, the layer is um, basically where there's space the crystal then has room to form. That's where you have what they call euhedral crystals which are really well formed crystals and anhedral crystals. Um, anhedral being the, the not so well formed crystals. So yeah, the crystal needs space to grow, and if it's if it's constricted, um, it's not going to grow to its natural shape. Maybe it's flattened or shortened, um, depending on the pressure and temperature. That's more or less what's dictating the crystal shape, and of course the space. The only problem here is the fact you're pretty well on the edge of the. Uh, it's a bit of a drop off beneath me here, about ten or probably about ten feet down. So as you're chipping away, you're kind of you're in a precarious position. Uh, there's digging down here. Who do we got? Find any good there, buddy? Nothing lately. Nothing lately, eh? Stuff everywhere, though. All the viewers keep asking why you keep finding better stuff than me. Any any uh, reason for your success? Dig like a madman. Dig like a madman. It's actually true. <laughs> he digs real hard. There's an example of. Uh, a pocket that's been worked out on top of the uh, on top of the road cutting. It's pretty deep, um, edged by quartz. You could follow that seam up into the bush, and I'll bet you there's more pockets. Right? There's a 400 just up there. So this whole area is likely to have pockets like that all over the place. Let's 
kids I've been talking with. Um, they've got some screwdrivers from home and they're busily working at the rock right now. I've just made three new rock hounds. Uh, they just told me about a rattlesnake, a huge rattlesnake that they'd seen uh, two weeks ago, just down over there, about uh, 50 meters away. This is perfect rattlesnake territory. I'm wearing sandals. You've got to be a bit careful. Plus, I'm creeped out by snakes. So, well, I think I'm going to call it quits. I need to get home by about uh, four o'clock today, as I got a friend coming over, and we've got another trip planned for tomorrow. Translucent. It's still pretty nice, buddy. Just clean that up, and it's uh, you got a real sweet find on you. Well, I'm back at the park and ride here. 400 and Highway 9, uh, that's where I met Jeff this morning. Uh, he says to me, he says, don't touch anything in my car, right? Like, what, you know, what the hell, you know? You, you, you're a skin storm, right? There's skin blowing all over my car. You, you shut the window. Anyway, uh, that was a little hurtful, actually, right? I mean, yeah, who hasn't had an allergic reaction to, I don't know what it was, man, shrimps or maybe doing my deck or something at home and getting arsenic? I don't know, but yeah, I must admit, the hands are hurting a bit. Um, just because he's got a new car, he thinks he's going to push me around. I can't leave skin all over the place. Kind of weird, eh? Like, the, the wife got really offensive last night. She goes, uh, she says, don't touch me. Your hands feel like sandpaper. Uh, you're like a lizard. Um, and then I'm feeding the chickens. This is interesting, though, right? Just a little extra for you here. I'm feeding the chickens. I love grated cheese. So I'm hand feeding them, right? And I got chicken licking and uh, Henny Penny, two of my chickens. And um, they both start like going at, at the skin on my hands, like forget the grated cheese. Like they weren't interested in the grated cheese. They're pulling off chunks of skin and eating it, right? And it's like, Ear! it st actually started hurting, eh? So I had to stop these things from uh, devouring. You know, it's like, you know, cats will eat their owner, they say. I'll bet you chickens would do much the same, given the opportunity. Um, you know, the Henny Penny, she pulls off this huge strip right off the side of my finger, which hurt, believe me. Do you ever hear the expression to tear a strip off someone? Gives that a whole new meaning, eh?